Welcome back, everybody, for round three here of Modern Mondays at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. We are Portland Paper. I am Urchin Kali, and I'm here with... Ian Lunger. And this round, we are going to bring you... Ponza <laughs> versus Decks Crab that Vine. don't interact. We brought you... Last round, we brought you decks that interact. <laughs> this round, we bring you decks that try and invalidate what the other person is doing. Well... I guess one amulet. I don't. I don't consider amulet game one to be a super interactive yeah, deck. Yeah, I, think, I think we last round we brought you Travis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who always wants to interact. He's that kind of player. Andrew here aiming just to barf a lot of things out of his graveyard onto the battlefield and kill you with him. Not super interactive. Pretty linear. Karen here. He's interactive. I. I, th I think Lance Lando is interactive. That's interacting. Yeah. It's yeah. It is interactive, but it's kind of in the like. Oh, yes. It's interacting <laughs> to keep the other player from yeah, playing it's, magic. It's griefing. It's not um, right. It's not. It's not reacting. Right. Is it like it's not really a prison deck either? Like, how no. do you describe? Is it a tempo? What is no, Ponza? No, no, no. Um, it's not quite a. It's not quite a stack strategy because those tend to be centered around abusing symmetrical effects, right. but it is a resource denial strategy. Sure. Yeah, I kind of like calling it, I mean, I kind of like calling it a tempo deck. I mean, you, you, you need to disrupt your opponent's mana early and then you have to win because otherwise they draw into mana and then they beat you. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is the problem with Ponza is if your opponent actually does get lands going, you don't really have anything to do about it. Yeah, it's like playing Delver, except that instead of being able to play Stifle and uh, Stone Rain your opponent for one, you're Stone Raining your opponent for three. It's a little different. Yeah, seems mostly worse. <laughs> Andrew going to mulligan at least to five here. Graveyard decks tend to be a little, tend to be okay at mulliganing due to the fact that they leverage their graveyard as their hand, but Crabvine isn't dredge, and it actually does take natural draws and needs to find its pieces to actually cast. Right. Um, so this is a little more painful than it would be against with a uh, traditional dredge, but. Can I just note one thing that I really like is the use of a die to track mulligans. Um, I see people in the London mulligan area, there are plenty of people that just kind of mulligan and, you know, the idea is that you just keep it in your mind what mulligan you're on, but I think it's so much cleaner to just have a die for both players that tracks what mulligan they're on. I think that's reasonable. I I admit I don't do it. I tend to declare out loud. Mm. Like, I'll I'll declare it when I decide to take my mulligan. I'll go to six, and then when I lay out my hand, I'll go six again, and I'll just say it multiple times, but that works for me. I'm not arguing with you, though. Mm. I'm just explaining why I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually do it for myself and Ooh. my opponent. I don't know what Rough. Um. Andrew's going to go to four. <laughs> now, Crowdfine could have a perfect four. This is a deck that hasn't lost to on a mulligan four, but and certainly the London Mulligan helping here. If you're mulliganing four on the Vancouver, you're probably completely screwed already. Yep. And I don't know, if you're current, maybe your spidey senses are tingling that if you're not sure what Andrew's on, you're kind of thinking, you know, unlikely that it's like a fair deck that's mulliganing this low. No. I'm thinking Dredger Tron if I'm current. Yeah. I've definitely just Tron goes to four, Tower Mine, Power Plant, yeah. Karn, and you just flip the table because they're not allowed to do that. Right. And if I have Kern, I see the gray sleeves, and I'm like, they're on Tron. They're totally on, on Tron. Tron. So this is going to be great. You should just change the thing right now to say that Andrew's on Tron. We yeah. know he's on Tron. He's proven it. <laughs> Tron the Mulligans. Mine. We're going to keep this one. Those three. Don't need them. Never needed them to the bottom and here we go andrew also on the play here yikes it's gonna fetch and shock with that polluted delta and being on the play is super big for andrew here because again kern's earliest land destruction is going to come turn two and by that point if andrew has an explosive hand it's probably going to have barfed enough things onto the table that kern's might be in a uh, in trouble Yes, uh, this is. It's also worth noting. I don't believe Crabvine actually needs to make that many land drops. So, sort of, if he can keep replacing the land when he needs it, you might be in a situation where you can just hold lands until you need to play them. Right. Um, 
I mean, depending on what you plan for the crab, right? Crab. I think we're going to see a crab right here, right now. Oh, nope. We're going to venture deeper. We're going to tome scour for four. One, two, three, four. Two triggers off that. That's going to be an Arkham Bebo and a creepy chill. Let's get it going. No prized amalgams or anything to fish out of the yard with that Narcomoeba, but it's a start. Andrew taking the three right back from that fetch shock. Okay, in here, do we have an accelerator? Yeah, I believe there was a Utopia Sprawl in hand. Um, if I didn't see if there was an Arbor Elf, I think in this matchup you want to run out the Arbor Elf first if you have the Arbor Elf. Uh, you're not too worried about the Elf getting picked off. Um, Nice basic. Okay. Here's the Arbor Elf. So I believe Curran can actually, will be able to make four mana the next turn with the uh, Sprawl plus uh, either that Stomping Ground or I want to say maybe there was another Fetch in hand. Uh, there was a st at least the Stomping Ground. Nargamiba gets in. Curran down to 15. This is what you want to see if you're current here. Uh, just Catacombs Pass from Andrew is um, encouraging. Yeah, no glimpse. Nothing like that. I feel like for these graveyard decks, turn two tends to be one of those kind of integral turns. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeing nothing on turn two when the player has like a decent amount of resources at their disposal, you're kind of thinking that you know the deck is going to have trouble doing much in general. Right. Out of Dredge, it's Cathartic Reunion. Out of Crab Vine, it's going to glimpse the unthinkable. Curran going to run out of Blood Braid Elf, Cascade, into Once Upon a Time. Pick something up there. Also, let's give Andrew some credit. He doesn't have a turn to play. He mulliganed to four. Yeah. I do think um, one of the areas that I don't like Once Upon a Time in actually is... Uh, index with blood braid elf uh it, i it, w it was taking me a while to find any matchups where i didn't like once upon a time i kind of have thought that it's just been good in a ton of different green decks and i don't get me wrong i still think it's a good card in ponza but with blood braid elf the whole idea is that you're going to add to the battlefield when you cast the elf and then you know hit something like a tarmogoyf but it's so much less like impactful to hit something like a once upon a time. I don't think you necessarily have to add to the battlefield for blood braid elf to be leveraging the kind of value you want to leverage. You can, you can hit a removal spell. You can hit a discard spell. I think that's fine. Um, but hitting something that doesn't itself give immediate value, but rather puts a card in your hand to then cast later. So it doesn't have to be battlefield exactly, but you do want to get, you want to get your value right away. Mm -hmm. Oh Yeah. What you really want to do is put ancestral visions in your deck so you can blood braid yes. in the ancestral visions. Yes. That's what you want to do. There's, there could be no downside. You're playing Utopia Sprawl. You can get blue. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love it. All right. Andrew here fetching up a swamp. He's got a Dark Slick Shores flush with land. We haven't hit a Stone Rain, which I think is the ideal hit with a blood braid off in a Ponza deck. Gurmag Angler. It's a big, it's a big fish. Big fish. We're angling to get somewhere with this line. Everybody on stream has brought some pretty solid basic game to the table. Yeah, I respect it. We got the Saga Swamp. Ice Age Forest. Mm -hmm. Love them. Ice Age is my favorite. Ba I've, I've thought about it a while. My favorite basics are Ice Age. Mm. I am a... Uh, Portal 2, Portal 2nd Age, I Ooh. think is my favorite Ooh. basics. It does depend a little bit on the land. Like, um, Ice Age Forests are okay. Mm -hmm. Mirage Forest, that's where it's at. Here's Glorybringer. Just smack you in the face for four, why not? Hanging back with the Blood Braid Elf. Not swinging to the angler. No, uh, he's holding up red with the stomping ground, so he's decided to let Andrew know he's not holding a bolt. Because if you're Andrew, I don't. I think you don't block the blood braid elf there because if it attacked, because you'd only go to nine, and you really can't lose that Gurmag angler because you have nothing else going on. So I think Curran might have been able to get in for three there. So oh, yeah, two-hour bike ride is a. Uh, it's quite a ride. <laughs> Maybe think about public transit. Rian Vorland, maybe that's closer. I don't know. Yeah, which side of the town are you on? There may be another shop. There's lots of modern in Portland. Yeah. 
Andrew going to get in for six. Cut Curran's life total in half. And gets a blocker. That is a Merfolk o four. secret keeper. Does blocks. And here is Gravecrawler. He does not do blocks. In fact, does blocks very well against Blood, Blood Raid Elf. Secret keeper. Yes. Indeed. Here's a Kessig Wolf run. Here's another Blood Raid Elf. Uh-oh. <laughs> so once upon a time again. Ouch! That. Uh, and then I'm going to go to combat. Kind of digging this art. Attack with these exert four damage. All right. Here's Glorybringer getting in with exert. Going to take out the blocker. Ooh. Getting in for total 10 damage. Yep, 10 damage. And I believe that was a stomp to finish it off. I think so. So that's going to that's gonna be game. Uh, current taking down game one here. It was a very decent game off of four cards from Andrew. I have a lot of respect for that. All right. Let's take a look at some sideboards while we also look at this heckin' weird merfolk secret keeper art. <laughs> Options for Curran on Ponza. Three Anger of the Gods, love those. One Worm Coil Engine, an Ensnaring Bridge, a Graph Digger's Cage, a Pithing Needle, an Engine Explosives. I'm guessing that's a Karn board. Not a sideboard hmm. package. I didn't see any yeah. cards, but that does not. Yeah, I agree. Five with one you. of artifacts do not yep. smell to me of actual sideboard. Speaking of one of argument artifacts, <laughs> we have a platinum Empyrean and three Madcap experiment. Let's just get get real wild there. Right. And then three obstinate Bayloth. What do you like other than the obvious anger of the gods? Uh, definitely the Empyrean angle is coming in at least for. At least for this game. Once the cat's out of the bag with the Empyrean combo, you probably board it out. But um, the surprise factor of this can just win the game against a deck that's um, probably not bringing in any cards that can kill Platinum Empyrean. Probably not. So um, I think that's super solid. Yeah. Um, I think between those seven cards, you're in decent yeah. shape. I don't think you want to go too much further than that. All right. Options here for Andrew. Two Ashiok Dream Render. One Assassin's Trophy, three Force of Negation, two Thought Seize, two Nature's Claim, three Fatal Push, and two Stain the Mind that Convoke Cranial Extraction card. It's pretty mm. sweet. Um, against a Ponza deck. So I think the funny thing about this is I actually think that Andrew will probably hedge and bring in the Nature's Claims, mm -hmm. um, thinking that Curran's <laughs> probably bringing in Graft Digger's Cage. I would. Uh, and we'll find that there's no Graph Digger's Cage, but they might hit the Empyrean. So, yeah. um, so kind that's of some dis-synergy, not dis-synergy, but like kind of just some funny interplay with trying to bring in a package like the Empyrean package in a matchup where your opponent may expect a different artifact. I actually like that a lot. Um, and I think if you're Andrew, you absolutely bring in um, Nature's Claim as a uh, counter hate. Mm -hmm. board end like if you, sure. you you just assume that a red green deck is bringing an artifact form of graveyard yeah, hate. relic and or so graph digger's cage or right and so you just board against that and if you don't see it game two then you consider going back if you're go if you're able to win game two and go to game three but just you don't want to be dead to it so you just yep. bring it in and i think that's that's about it that's i'm not it. super stoked on anything else in the board here no, I mean, you could Brand consider or. a trophy as a catch-all, but I'm not really about it. Like, it hits Glorybringer, but not a lot of love here. I think you just want to be faster than Glorybringer. True. Glory, mm. Glory be too slow for Pioneer. Some people say it's too slow for Modern, too, but Curran I'm doesn't, and Ponza doesn't. Ponza does not Curran say that. Curran beat down with Glorybringer last game, so. The glory was brought. Mm-hmm. Nice to see Amonkhet. You know, Amonkhet doesn't get to represent very much in the Eternal formats, but uh, glory be. Glory be. People not overexerting themselves for that card. No. No. Um, Padumpa. <laughs> um, and yes, the question is this every Monday. This is every Monday. 
Portland paper right here. You should follow. So you'll always know. Mm -hmm. We're going to be live with Modern Mondays. That's it. four rounds of Modern every week. And if you have a Twitch Prime subscription that you haven't used this month and want to toss it our way, we definitely appreciate it. Twitch Prime subscriptions are part of how we got a camera in the booth. And all of the money that we get from this stream goes directly into upgrades to making the stream better. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. You never would have seen our beautiful plaid ensembles if it weren't for the lovely people you guys who have subscribed that's true you, you'd, you'd never that know camera. that we don't coordinate and wear three different types of plaid <laughs> oh thank you juggernauts. juggernauts thank you for the subscription yeah. yay Very much appreciated. we have plans to improve this stream and we're really excited so every time someone subscribes it's awesome because we get closer to that yeah um but and Isn't? to our karaoke stream that we have not decided the terms and conditions for. Yes, we are trying to pick out the number of subscri subscriptions we want to hit before we um, subject ourselves to Twitch karaoke. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, we will do this for you. We just have to figure out the exact terms and conditions of the Twitch karaoke. Yeah. And Vibe Pizza with the good point that Vizier... Uh, Vizier is definitely an almond kick card and definitely is seeing play. That's but it's correct. kind of like the accoutrement to the devoted druid's power. Yeah. And Juggernauts, I agree. There is something completely different about paper magic. It is weird the shifts that have happened over the past year. It's a little unclear wh where the game's going in various ways. But, you know, I play online as well, and it's just a very different game. And when you're watching coverage of, like, the arena events it's a very different game and the coverage pace is different you don't get to have as many discussions just because you're doing more straight play by play mm -hmm. um and so i really think that paper is a different entity and i'm gonna be pretty personally i don't know the more it i hope it doesn't fade the more it fades the more i'm gonna be personally a little broken up about it because this is the magic i want to play so this is the magic we like to cover and we'll be here for you every week yeah, as somebody who has a very addictive personality, uh, paper has been kind of a godsend for me in that I've just stopped playing online because I have not very good self-control. <laughs> and paper is a good place for me to play magic in a way that limits the amount that I can play and makes me feel, I think, more fulfilled when playing this game. So It does. It's worked well for me, and I'm going to do everything that I can to support the paper scene here in Portland and try and keep the stream alive and etc. Yeah, by the way, in case you don't know, Ian's done a ton of work for this. This is, I mean, really your work technically to get this going. But I mean, it's all of our, I mean, it, I appreciate that, but everybody, everybody that adds to the show, the broadcasters, the people that play on stream, I mean, it's, it's for everybody and that's the goal. I love you guys. Aw. Speaking of getting this going. Andrew's starting the game off with a Stitcher Supplier. Going to mill Force of Negation, a land, and a Creeping Chill. So we're running Force of Negation. Interesting. Curran going to once upon a time into a tireless tracker. Yeah, I wonder maybe... What's the thought for Force? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think. Maybe it is it against Blood Moon, Blood just Moon. like afraid of just getting completely shut out of the match. That's reasonable. This is not Dredge. It can't just start running its own game, and it's not red base. So don't think they – I mean, he has basics, but not infinity basics. It's a start you want to see if you're current here. And Curran does have the elf into Blood Moon, so um, Andrew's going to have to put a lot on the board this turn or have the Force of Negation up. Indeed. Otherwise, uh, probably going to get locked out of this game. Yeah, I hadn't thought about Force for Blood Moon, but I think it's very heads up. Yeah. Here's a carrion could, feeder. Alternatively, you could hold up. you could hold up a land for Nature's Claim. We are not... Going to do that, which means I assume we are not holding Nature's Claim. Which means, I think, it, as long as Curran's hand is functional, like has some cards after the Blood Moon lands, uh, I think Andrew's probably pretty locked out of this game. Yeah. 
Stitcher, supplier, and carrying feeder are not going to do that work. Yeah, maybe looking at a backup match shortly. More beautiful basics. Yeah, I think it's the, such striking skylines, I think, or just sky color on both. Oh, sides. he had it! <laughs> wow. He had uh, it! And the Blood Moon is exiled, so if yeah, that matters, we will do something about it. Unlikely to matter. Yep. Grand Center had a second one, didn't he, though? Is he? Oh, Nark Amoeba one that's, time. That's pretty Did solid, though. Happen. I'll take two prize amalgams in the yard here. That's fair enough. We can just hit one Nark Amoeba. So good. I mean, if you hit one Nark Amoeba and you put that stuff on the board, even if you get Blood Mood from there, I think you're kind of fine. Giving the, the way these draws are, are shaping up. This deck is more like force mer, mer than crap fine. I'm sorry? What? I'm sorry? Force mer folk. I, you're all right, Ian? No. <laughs> <laughs> we all just right. haven't seen any crabs or vines. I know you're very disappointed about that. I want to see the crabs and the vines. Mm, I'm trying to do a little better for you. Like, have we even seen any in the yard? Have we seen any? No, none. And I guess, you know, when I said there was no glimpse, I don't even know that this is glimpse fine. Because there's crab, there's glimpse. There's many varieties of, I'm not oh, going to yeah. call it bad dredge. Okay, but, yeah, that's fair. You know, So I guess, yeah, I guess we'll force folk. That's way better. <laughs> force folk, there we go. <laughs> Five uh, mana. Bring glory in the glory. Bam, bam. Ayo. Kill your carrion feeder. In for seven. Andrew falls to 13. Now we're getting it done. Never mind what I said about one Nark Amoeba getting this out from under a blood moon. That will not cut it this time. Andrew on a so very short clock. The way that Andrew has been fetching... I don't know. It just I guess maybe we're going to play something here that takes all the mana, but it feels like if Crab was in the deck, we might be holding up more lands in hand. Yeah, I agree, because the fetch lands are just extra landfall triggers, so unless you actually need all of this mana, which he does. Okay. Oh, <laughs> all if, all right. this take, is not where you want to be. I take everything back. But Trying to get it done with the hard cast Venji. So... Kern's life total was off. He actually falls to four here, which is pretty dangerous. Andrew's sitting at 12. That glory bringer is exerted. Um, Kern can leave up like a trump blocker for the venge vine, and that's pretty good. Kill it on the exert. So I think he's still very much in control of this game. But Andrew is not, not threatening. Blood braid elf. What are we going to hit? I will. Yeah, I'm not loving the blood braid elves in this deck. Not going to lie. No, I mean, they're like they're a thing that I think that you kind of have to play in the deck. But yeah, when you're playing 10 one-mana accelerators, four Arbor Elves, like four Utopia Sprawls, and usually like a, a Birds or two, they the can have times. really sad... Yeah, and Once Upon a Time. So they can have really sad Cascades a decent then, amount of the well, time. Well, then I don't think you have to play them. Yeah, I wonder if it should be something like... Uh, I was going to say maybe more Season Pyromancers or something like that. Ooh, I like that. What? Just got cast? You going to be a little help That's... There's a Haunted uh, Dead? Yes. Okay. Not Which feels like not Not enough. what you want to be doing. We are playing these cards not in the way we want to be playing them. Haunted Dead, usually something as a discard outlet. Here's another Glory Bringer, and that will end this match 2-0 to zero in favor of Curran. Ponza taking down Crabvine, a lot of mulligans, and just not able to get there through the exerted dragons. We're going to look for a backup match for you as we have uh, 17, 18 minutes left in round. And so we should be back shortly. See you soon.